Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and today we're going to talk about Q mixes. Q as in C U E mixes inside of Studio One. What is a Q mix? A Q mix is just a headphone mix. Why it's called Q mix, I don't know. Probably because you get your Q on when to play through the headphone. I don't know. But in the studio, specifically when you're working with multiple musicians, it's pretty common for one or more of them to want their own headphone mix. Now, if you're only ever recording yourself, and it's just you in the studio, then you don't really have a need for this feature. So you can skip this video and go watch something else. However, if you work with other musicians or you plan to at some point, this is a great feature to know about. So the idea is you can have your main mix, which is what you as the kind of person sitting in the driver's seat are listening to, but then also you can have separate mixes and balances for the other musicians. It's just like in a live show environment. Each musician has their own stage monitor or their own in-ear mix, um, and they can have the exact balance that they want. We can do that, and we can do it all inside of Studio One. A couple of things you have to keep in mind. In order to have a separate mix for everyone, you need to have a separate pair of outputs for every person that wants their own headphone mix. You also need a separate headphone amp for each person. So between having the interface with the outputs and the right cabling and preamps, it's a bit of an endeavor, but once you have it in place, you can use it forever. So if you have a small interface like this Audio Box Go, this is a two channel interface. It has two inputs, two outputs. This one won't work for Q mixes. However, if you have something like the Quantum 2626 that has eight inputs and eight analog outputs, then you can have the first two be your main mix, and then you've got six additional outputs available to you for Q mixes. So you could do three stereo mixes for three different musicians which I, I find myself at most I'm using two in the studio when it's me, drums and bass, tracking at the same time. Otherwise, um, I've never used more than that. For me personally, I don't use the Q mixes in Studio One because I actually have a Studio Live mixer in front of me. So I do all my headphone mixes on the mixer itself, just like you would in a live sound environment. However, they're really handy in Studio One, and I learned something this week about them that I didn't know beforehand, so I wanted to share that with you. Okay, so we want to have a Q mix. How do we set that up? Well, the first place we go, we open up our mix, and we click on the I.O. button here on the top left of the mix. This will open our I.O. setup, I.O. standing for inputs and outputs. There are two tabs here, inputs and outputs. We want to go to the outputs tab. And now we can see this kind of top row here shows us all the available outputs on our interface. I'm using a Studio Live 24, and it has a crazy amount of outputs to it. Um, but then I can create specific um, outputs here that show up in Studio One when I go to change an output of something. So I want to make a stereo output because a headphone mix is going to be left and right, stereo, left and right. And we'll call this Drums HP, HP for headphones. And I'm going to have that come out channels three and four, so I just click there to select it. Now there's one more thing I have to do to make this a Q mix, and you probably guessed it already, is check this box underneath the Q mix column. And just like that, when I click Apply, you'll notice something jumped up here in my mix. I now have this Q mix section in my send section that wasn't there before. So this works very similar to sends, except it's dedicated for Q mixes. And there's one key difference, and that is this lock button here. So as soon as I create this mix for my drummer, um, he's getting the exact mix that I have in my session at, as the default starting point. So as you can see, uh, like, for example, here are some um, acoustic guitar tracks. As you can see, the level here matches the level here. If I move this, we can see this level is going up and down. It's the same. Same with panning. If I adjust the panning of this guitar, it adjusts the panning going to that cue mix. And that's because this lock button is enabled. And if you hover over that, much like anything in Studio One, hover over something if you don't know what it does, and Studio One will just tell you, this allows me to lock, level, and pan to channel. That means this send is exactly the same thing as this one. Same fader level, same panning. Now, you may think, okay, what's the point? Why not just send him a copy of your main mix? Because this will be my starting point, but then the drummer's going to say, uh, I want less guitar and more kick drum. And I say, no problem. So I just come up here to the guitar, and I just turn it down. And you'll see as soon as I adjust it, that lock becomes unlocked because it's no longer locked to my settings down here. It's now its own thing. So I've turned the guitars down there, and then I come over here to my kick drum track, and I turn that up and you'll see the lock went away there as well and then he might say yeah it's cool a little more snare I say sure and they say um 
give me a little less bass, and I say, sure. And now we have a custom mix for my drummer that is going out outputs three and four that is independent from what I'm hearing here. So now I can make adjustments to my mix while he's playing, and he will still hear his drum mix. It's a very cool setup. And then obviously, if we have a bass player, we just repeat the process on a different output. So I come here and I say, add another stereo. We'll call this bass headphones. Check the box. Make it into the next set of outputs, channels five and six. Say OK. And now I have a separate cue mix here for bass. And I can adjust it the same way I did the other one. So the thing that I didn't know you could do is that it defaults to automatically copying the existing mix. In years past, when I'm setting up headphone mixes inside a piece of software, I would use regular sends. Um, and I would have to literally go through and adjust all the levels to get a rough idea of the same mix that I have in my session. And it was super annoying. Well, Studio One, like it tends to do, and the reason I switched to Studio One all those years ago, it just makes my life easier and does things for me that I was gonna do anyway. So as soon as I create a bass mix, that bass mix is getting the exact same mix that I have, and I can quickly go in and say, well, of course he's gonna want more of himself. Bam, done. Now the final question you might say is, okay, what if I wanna adjust the overall volume of that headphone mix? Let's say I crank the bass, and he's like, okay, can I just turn down the overall volume of the send? Maybe it's clipping because we just cranked the bass too much. If you look down here, there's an output section in our mixer. And these show up right over here on the far right next to our main output. And they actually aren't visible unless you click here and drag them out. And then these are those outputs that we saw inside the I.O. setup. But this gives us a physical, uh, physical fader for each of them. And so we could come in here and say, okay, we can see, oh yeah, the bass headphone mix is clipping a little bit, so we could pull that down. We could turn the metronome on or off for the specific mix that we, uh, if the drummer and bass both want the metronome at different levels, we can click here to turn that on and adjust that up or down. We could even put plugins here. So if we wanted to put a limiter on here so that just in case we get nuts, it doesn't get clipped going out to them, we could do that. Be careful though, because limiters specifically sometimes cause latency, so maybe you don't want that. But big picture here, this is where we can set our metronome and we can set our overall output level of that headphone amp. Now don't forget, on the headphone amp itself, they have a volume control. So if they want more volume, that's the first place to look. But if they're getting too much volume or if they're not getting enough, this is another place that you can adjust that without having to go adjust each individual component because that kind of kills the flow for sure. So then you can have these visible here, you can make it very small and then scroll sideways to have only a handful showing, or you can get rid of it altogether by dragging it to the right. Lots of things here, but it's all related to cue mixes. If you ever plan to record with one other musician, uh, take some time to practice this, set this up and have it available to you so you can easily say, bam, I got you. Even if it's just a singer who wants more of her vocal and a little more reverb, you can do that really easily by using cue mixes. By the way, if you like videos like this and you use Studio One and you haven't subscribed to our channel, please take 30 nanoseconds and click on that red button to subscribe so you don't miss out on all the great content that we create for you to help you become even better at using Studio One and making music. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.